Jamie O'Hara just say that Spurs need to become the biggest team in London again. What, the early early 60s? Is that, was he alive? <laughs> I mean, he looks like he was alive. I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was born in the early 50s. I don't know. Anyway, uh, listen, he's got he's got Spurs in his heart. I almost said Chelsea there. He's got Spurs in his heart. He wants Spurs to do well. A lot of people are flagging them as a team that could do something special. I've got to say, as they go to Stamford Bridge this weekend, I mean, it's not a place where they've had a happy hunting ground. In fact, let's be honest, every time they play Chelsea since the Premier League started, they've only won seven of the 60 Premier League games, the last 30 seasons uh, against Chelsea. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it cannot be a fixture that the Spurs fans look forward to, but it maybe feels like they're looking forward to this weekend because they could send a big message out to the rest of the Premier League. Anyway, let's hear how the fans themselves feel about it. Uh, Luis Benaventi is a Chelsea YouTuber. Chris Cowlin, Spurs YouTuber. They both join us on Game Day Countdown. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, right. Good evening. Let's start with the Spurs' point of view then. How, how are you feeling about this game going to Stamford Bridge? Are you, are you confident? I wouldn't say confident. Um, it's certainly, um, you know, we're in a better place than we were. Antonio Conte has done um, a fantastic job. I call him the magician and the conductor. Um, he has done a fantastic job since he has come in in November, taking over from Nuno Espirito Santo. Um, but as you rightly said earlier, that is not a happy hunting ground for our Stamford Bridge. One win in Premier League history, and that was back in 2018, uh, when, of course, Deli Ali got a double and Christian Eriksen scored for us. But um, personally, I hate going to Chelsea because we very rarely get something there. Um, but we've got to feel uh, like we uh, are going to get over the line in big games like this. Um, because Conte has transformed this squad. He's brought in very good signings. The two signings that he brought in in January transformed our season and, and ultimately got us Champions League football for this season. The signings so far, um, you know, we've got to be looking at going to places like Chelsea now, uh, putting points on the uh, on the table and climbing up that Premier League table. And, um, you know, Ant- Antonio Conte is the man and the optimism is around the stadium at the moment. What do you think would be success for Tottenham this year? Because obviously since you've made some great signings, Perisic, Basuma and obviously Kulusevski and Bentoncourt in January. But what do you think success this year? Because obviously qualifying for the Champions League is brilliant. But I think a lot of Tottenham fans are saying they could win the league. I think success, Leanne, is definitely a trophy. Um, you know, 2008 was our last trophy, which of course we beat Chelsea 2-1 in the final. Um, you know, 14 years without a trophy is far too long. I believe Antonio Conte can achieve that at Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, he will go down as a real legend at the club if he did deliver a trophy. But um, Champions League football, of course, is very important as well. So if we could reach Champions League again for next season and put a trophy in the cabinet, I definitely think that that would go down as a huge success. OK, all right. So, you know, there's there's a bit of a balance there. You know, a team that should be confident, but dreads going away to Stamford Bridge. I, I asked if, if he was worried at all about the game as well. Well, maybe the Chelsea fans are. Lewis, how are you feeling about the possibility of being the underdogs at home against Spurs? Do you feel like that? I mean... <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's the best way to respond to that. Um, look, I think realistically, if you look at how we played in our opening game, there was a slight worry that we hadn't improved uh, in comparison to obviously last season. Obviously, made some great signings in the forward lines. Now, Raheem Sterling being obviously the biggest. Um, but, you know, I, th- I think that, yeah, realistically, yeah, underdogs probably wouldn't be the term I'd use, especially considering the the record that Tottenham have come into Stamford Bridge. But I'm not going to sit here and completely dismiss Tottenham Hotspur because that would just be stupid to do so. Um, the football they're playing has been fantastic. You can see, or well, personally for me, because obviously football is subjective, some might be, have a very different thing to me on this. But I, I feel that, you know, when I watch this Tottenham team, I do see a, a blueprint uh, to what Antonio Conte did when he won the league with Chelsea. You can see that there's that dynamism, there's that positivity when they go forward. And that's something which, you know, does does worry me. Um I think, though, with our back line, you know, we've got a pretty strong back line def- and defensively, they've been pretty resolute under Thomas Tuchel. So I think it's it's going to be a very interesting battle. Um, but, you know, hopefully we do come out the other side with a win. I think it's more important for Tottenham than it is for us. For us, it's bragging rights and this, you know, sense where we can just kind of get three points and move on, hopefully. Um, for Spurs, obviously, last season didn't beat us at all, didn't score a goal. Um 
you know, for them, it's it's the benchmark which they want to be set in. So to do this against big, the big teams and obviously try and go for those titles and prove they can go for those trophies, this, these are the games which they have to win. So the pressure's on, on them than it is. Well, it, 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 in a way, these are the games that you have to win if you're going to do something in the Premier League this, this season. Absolutely, absolutely. But look, for me, I, I don't know if we're going to be going for a title. I don't know what the situation is. Obviously, it's a completely new ownership, completely new structure. We, we don't know how it's not, Chelsea it's not completely. Operating. It's not a completely new team, though, is it? You've had the manager in for a while. He's won you a, a Champions League, got to plenty of cup finals last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a few new players in through the door. Um, but ultimately, the, the, the mass of the squad, the core of the squad is going to be the same. We should expect Chelsea to be a top three side in the Premier League, shouldn't we? I'd ex- I'd say top three, top four. I mean, personally, I don't I don't think we will finish top four. I just think purely there are there are lots of different variables to consider. It's not just the eleven guys that go out on the pitch, as was proven last year, especially with everything that happened with obviously the sanctions and stuff. It, you could see it took a toll on everybody around Stamford Bridge on the pitch and off it. So you know we don't know. <laughs> but Lewis, <laughs> I, wanna, I wanted to interrupt season, you for a second though, because last year when you guys brought in Lukaku, a lot of people were saying Chelsea were going to win the league. So why now? Do they feel, are you saying you'll be happy to be in the top three based upon that? Because obviously you've got Sterling in and obviously mm-hmm. Aubameyang might come, but I'm a bit surprised that you're not thinking, you know, you could really push. I didn't think we were going to win the league last year. I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't speak for everyone. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, th- I think that, like, f- for me, what I saw with Lukaku was you saw, obviously, Hans has beautiful thing. When he arrived, you thought you saw this missing piece, you know, this big player which is going to make a big difference after being away in Italy. There was the whole romanticism about him coming back to Chelsea. And it just didn't work out that way. Um, you know, obviously, adding Sterling's great. I do feel that sometimes the way we play, it does play a detriment to some of the players that we have had. Um, so, you know, obviously, we'll have to see what happens with this. Obviously, Raheem Sterling's a fantastic addition. Um, but look, for me, I, I thought we were going to be, you know, a top three side maybe last year. I didn't think we could challenge Liverpool and Man City. I think if you look at the depths of their squad, we have a deep squad. But the problem is, because it's from four or five managers, it's it's not really one in the manager's image, like it is at Liverpool, like it is at Manchester City, where they've obviously had this push on them for years because they, they've had that time to do so. Um, but we've obviously got loads of different styles, loads of different sorts of players. And I think some of the quality in depth just wasn't good. You know, I thought some of our recruitment in previous seasons hadn't been great. And that does show, you know, there are a lot of players going out now and hopefully we're going to see a big difference over the next couple of years. I mean, I think there's a whole rebuild being done at Chelsea in terms of like, this is what I'm saying about the structure. I think that overall, you know, you've got Todd Bowley's dealing with the transfers, which obviously this year mm. it's been, it's been good. It's, it's, it, there's been a method to the madness. Um, but I think that overall whole situation at Chelsea right now, We've just got to deal with it, uh, move forward. Obviously, he's already looking at bringing the sporting director and learning from his mistakes. So we'll have to see what happens. I don't think you have anything to worry, though, about your strength and depth. Try being a Man United fan. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, (laughs) you've got top, top top players. You have got top players. And Mm. I think, obviously, Mm. certain players like Trevor Chalobah last year as well, you know, they came through. I think Chilwell, Reese James, if they can stay fit, they've got, you've got top players at Chelsea. If Yang, De Jong... And Fafana are assigned by Chelsea in this window. Yeah. It has been a fantastic first <laughs> window uh, for Todd Bowley. Um, listen, I, I wonder, who, who who do you guys think, out of Chelsea and Spurs, is going to finish higher in the Premier League this season? Chris? I think we're definitely going to reach top four again. So I, I agree with Louis. Uh, Chelsea uh, will perhaps finish outside the top four. Our, our times have changed where Chelsea fans are saying that they're going to finish outside the top four, eh? Yeah, well, a little bit of negativity there. Fight talk, fight talk. I know, I know. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis, your response? I mean, I mean, Chris is just trying to get a nibble out of me, but you know, you know, <laughs> know that that won't be the case. So I, th- I think, look, I, I, I like to go with a half cup empty approach this year. <laughs> Listen, I'm taking, I'm looking at this conversation going, let's just have it at Christmas. Let's see what's going on. And then I can say, but right now I'm looking at, I think how everyone else has strengthened and the, the stages they are and their processes and their projects. I think we're a bit further behind. So, yeah, I, th- I think maybe we'll finish a th- fifth. But I think, look, realistically, I think that three, four, five between Chelsea, Spurs and Arsenal will be um, inter- interchangeable. But, mm. you know, we'll have to see. Go on then. Let's get your predictions for Sunday. Uh, Chris? I'm going to go 2-1 Spurs, Harry Kane and Hun Min Son. OK, on the score sheet after uh, drawing a blank in the first week. Uh, what do you think, Lewis? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say I hope we win. <laughs> 
I, I can't do I can't do, give you figures because that's a that's a superstition of mine. And every single time I've done that, it's gone wrong. So uh, I, I can't do that to myself. Win, lose, or draw for Chelsea. I'm just, oh, say, how can you win. be so that's, pessimistic? That's I'm a Chelsea Sorry? fan. How can you be so pessimistic? It's not all doom and gloom. You guys have got a top team. Oh no, I'm not pessimistic. I think we got we got we got a fantastic side, but you know, it's just being a football fan, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, Leanne, your prediction. I'm going for Chelsea three, Tottenham two. And my wow. girlfriend's uh, dad's going to kill me for this one because they're all Tottenham fans. So sorry, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a tight game. I'm going to go one all. Sitting on the fence with this one. We did our predictions All of you lot night. sitting on the fence. No wonder I get pelters. No, well, it is what it is. Sometimes you stick your neck out and, and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, we'll see if either side does this weekend. Uh, Lewis Benavente, Chelsea YouTuber. Chris Cowlin, a Spurs YouTuber. Thank you for joining us on Game Day Countdown. Thanks, Good luck with the weekend game as well. Huge game uh, in the Premier League. Second week and it is Chelsea taking on Spurs. Uh, it's a big game of the 100 this evening. John Jackson's watching Southern Brave against London Spirit.